the mother of all Android vulnerabilities, a safe running Windows XP is unsafe, and oh my god drones, all that now on ThreatWire. Hello world, I'm Darren Kitchen, and this is ThreatWire for Wednesday, July 29th, 2015, your th summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom, and a huge thanks to everybody who's been watching the show and contributing and supporting, and it's been just crazy lately, so let's get straight into it, because, quote, the worst Android vulnerability in the history of the mobile OS. That's the quote that's going around in regards to an Android vulnerability to be disclosed at the Black Hat Security Conference next week. The exploit attacks a uh, weakness in Android's Stage Fright, the media playback engine that's aptly named, that debuted in Android 2.2, and it can be embedded in an MMS message, of course, sent by text message. And Zimperium, the company that discovered the bug, they reported it to Google back in April and May, and given that there are 950 million potentially vulnerable phones on the market, we're hoping that there can be a fix pushed without too much resistance from the carriers. A workaround, of course, would be to disable automatic downloading of MMS messages in your text message client. Uh, and in response to a query on the matter in regards to text secure, the, the epic you should be running it right now, uh, the author, Moxie Marlin Spike, responded by saying, quote, we don't do any pre-processing that involves stage fright. There are no technical details at all about this vulnerability for maximum hype but you'd have to physically tap on the media and then click through a warning about playing the media insecurely before stage fright got involved. It's good to see. Well, we'll see if this vulnerability actually warrants the media attention when it's released at Black Hat. Also, it has now been zero days since the last branded vulnerability. In more upcoming Black Hat DEF CON hacking news, security firm Bishop Fox released a cute video promoting their upcoming talk on hacking into a Brinks CompuSafe. The smart safe processes deposits, and there are some 14,000 that have been deployed throughout the United States. It's estimated nearly a quarter million dollars can be in each at any given time, and the process to hack them involves a USB drive and 100 lines of codes. Actually, looking deeper into this story, it seems that it is, in fact, our very own USB rubber ducky in play here. Actually, a Google-cached version of their press release had read, quote, we will also release USB rubber ducky script to automate the whole attack, acting as a skeleton key to open any Brink safe. Plug and plunder. Sounds awesome. The paragraph was also removed, though, so we'll see if they actually do, in fact, release the code. As it turns out, the Brinks CompuSafe is running an embedded version of Windows XP, and it features an exposed USB port. What'd they expect? Oh my god, drones! They're coming to kill us, and we're prepared to shoot them down, and we will fight them to the death in Vegas. I wanted to point out these fun quadcopter stories first off. A hack-a-day headline sums it up, quote, no, mounting a gun to a quadcopter probably isn't illegal. Of course, the author of the 14-second video showing a quadcopter shooting a pistol, he was recently arrested on completely unrelated charges. Uh, in response to the, quote, growing quadcopter threat, the Wall Street Journal has an interesting article titled, Next Step for Drones? Defending Against Them. And it showed off a company's epic anti-drone defense system, which uses radar and RF jamming equipment to take out model aircraft. Oh. Man, and finally, the coming DEF CON 23 hacking conference will debut the first ever Drone Wars, an official DEF CON event involving nano-class quadcopters under 50 grams, grams in a cage match with, of course, the standard rules, two drones enter, one drone leaves. I'll be participating in the Drone Fight Club on Friday night. I can't wait to see you guys in Vegas. Also, before I go, a huge thanks to everybody who has supported the show so far on Patreon. Uh, if you find value from the show and you can spare a few cents an episode, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash threatwire, and we may even be able to, to feature your adorable fur babies in the next episode, which is pretty awesome. I hope you will contribute and help keep us keeping this coming to you completely independent and ad-free. And if you can't donate, a like, a subscribe, a share, all those go a long way too. You can find the rest of our episodes and links to our social networks over at threatwire.net. With that, I'm Darren Kitchen. I'll see you on the internet.